Hi there, I'm Arshim, an application engineer at Materialize. Today, I'll cover scripting and show you how I created a script to automate the design of a pedicle screw guide. I'll start by quickly showing you the manual workflow, followed by the automated version. And while I do have some experience in Python, I'm not an expert. There are many resources available online to help you write code in Python. And you can even use your favorite AI assistant to help you. With this video, my goal is to give you an idea of what is possible with scripting in Thematic. Let's take a look at the guide. Starting from the planned position of the screws, we can design a drilling guide that looks like this. This example is not necessarily clinically accurate, but it contains the essential elements like a base, drilling holes, and a label. Let me show you how I got there. First, we indicate an area on the vertebra that is going to act as our base. And then we can give it a certain thickness. In this case, it's one millimeter. Next, we design two cones around the position of the screws here. And these cones are then added to the existing base with a simple Boolean operation. Now, because the cones are still protruding from the back of the base, we can use the vertebra to subtract them from the guide. And this is what we then end up with. After that, we can design smaller cylinders that can be used to make the holes inside the cones, and the guide really starts to take shape here. Though there are still a few small things that need to be done. We can add a label to it, which can be customized. Here I've just put case ID as an example. Now, in order to ensure proper positioning on the patient's spine, we remove undercuts, assuming that the guide needs to be placed on the vertebra from the back, like so. The final design of the guide together with the vertebra looks like this. So here I just quickly showed you the intermediate steps to give you an idea of the design process, but typically these steps take around 15 to 25 minutes depending on your proficiency in Thrematic. Now I'll show you the automated version of the same workflow. I'll first run the script and then I'll quickly go over some of the code with you. So if I start with an empty Thrematic file and run the script, all the necessary STL files are imported automatically. And the script requires input for the next step, so I indicate the surface that will act as a base for the surgical guide. And after marking and smoothing the border, press Escape. Now a window pops up asking to select the thickness for the guide, and let's go for two millimeter here. After selecting the thickness, I can see the cones in the background are already added to the design, including the holes. Now the script has paused and needs more input again. I indicate a point somewhere on the surface here and press escape. A window pops up asking what the label should say. And this flexibility is useful because it allows for workflow automation while retaining the option to perform some steps manually. After pressing enter, the guide is finished. The end result matches the one shown in the manual workflow, but now it was achieved in less than a minute in comparison. Let's take a look at the code without diving into too much detail. I wrote some comments here and there to make the code more readable for myself and others. So here we import the vertebra and the two screws. Next, we create cones around the positions of the screws. And if we take a closer look at the code, some methods correspond directly to the tools in Thrematic, like create cone or convert analytical to mesh. Here we let a window appear with the instruction to mark an area to act as a base plate. And here's a code for making a small window with two buttons to select a thickness. And I actually use an AI assistant to help me out a bit with this. Here we add the cones to the base plate, and below that we make the cylinders that are used to make holes in the cones. This is where the location for the label is indicated, and here is where the small text box is made for the label. And just as with the manual workflow, we end with removing the undercut. With this example, I hope to give you an idea of how scripting can be used to automate a design workflow. And of course, many other types of workflows can be scripted. Automatic landmarking is a good example. And if you want to learn more about the scripting functionalities in Mimics or how we can provide workflow automation services, be sure to contact us. And with that, I'd like to thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next time.